Like, girl, if you would have just put them slippers down and kept your booty where it needed to be. Hey y'all, welcome to Tripping with Amadi. If you are new to my channel, this is a series that I'm doing where I am taking a journey and watching the so-called top 100 films of all time. If you um, are new, I did a review on A Hard Day's Night. Check out that link over there. And today I am doing a review of In the Mood for Love. So before I get into my full review, here is a one minute synopsis of the actual film. So you have one couple and another couple and they both end up living in the same house. One man, he is really interested in writing like books and novels and all this other stuff. And we don't really know what the woman is interested in. But basically, they realize that both, hus both the man's wife and the woman's husband are cheating on each other. But not only are they cheating, but they're dating the opposite's uh, wife and husband. I know it sounds confusing. One's Cho and one's Chang. You'll get it once you w actually watch the film. But anywho, then they realize after their spouses are cheating with each other that they actually bangs with each other, that they actually are interested in each other, that they actually like each other. But they're in denial. They're like, nah, 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 this can't be it. This can't be it. But in reality, it is it. But we find them at the end not getting together. Very sad. So how did I do? Did I do a minute? I think I did. Let's talk about themes of the movie. So themes, like I said, I think one of the main themes is denial. We find both Mr. Chang, sorry, Mr. Chow and Mrs. Chang, both in denial that their relationships are not what they think they are are crumbling apart and they really try to like dress it up and pretend like it's not actually happening like when mr chow was on the phone with mrs chow she's like oh yeah you know i'm staying another late night you know what she doing same thing with miss chang miss chang knows her husband stays on an overnight trip stays on a trip traveling and all that stuff but when he comes home he's not loving he's not all up on her he's not trying to see how she's doing in life he don't even really call her like that so both of them realize miss chang and mr chow both realize that things aren't what it seems and then i feel like we reach a stage of acceptance like yes my spouse is cheating on me yes this is what it is but they don't really want to do anything about it they don't really want to change the status quo they don't want to leave their significant other they don't want to push and engage with somebody else they are just accepting that their relationship is not what it was and then we move into settling i think both of them tried to settle because instead of engaging with each other fully like leaving their spouses and being with each other we find that they don't do that in the end and it's like very very disappointing um because i wanted them to work out i wanted love to love you know but um chow moves away miss chang stays she actually has a child i don't know whose child that is that might be his child I, wow wow sorry this is just like a light bulb that just came on into my head that might be his child hmm wow that happened i don't know but she has a kid um but she has a kid and basically settles in and moves back into her old um apartment where she shared with mr chow and her cheating husband and mrs chow but she shared with mr Ch thing is trauma i think is a theme because mr chow and miss chang find each other because of the trauma and the deception of their spouses like they i don't think they would have felt comfortable to engage with each other if their spouses weren't cheaters if their spouses did not do what they did and so blatantly right there was a scene in the film where mrs uh chang asked him about his 
tie and where he got it. And Miss Chang, Mr. Chow, sorry, asked Miss Chang about like the purse that she got. And both of them were like, for real, for real, I'm not, I, I don't really care about getting my husband or my wife that. And they both like were like, yeah, because I see, I saw that purse. Cause my wife has the same purse and Miss Chang was like, oh, my husband got me this purse. And she's like, what about that tie? He's like, oh, my wife got me this tie. And she's like, yeah, I've seen the same tie on my husband. So it's just like they are living in this, in this space of deception and they're just like kind of trauma bonded together. Right? Like I think about like my coworkers when I was a teacher, like would I have hung out with them on a daily on a daily basis if they weren't my co-workers if we hadn't experienced the trauma of <laughs> urban education probably not but we have that um commonality together that pushes us to engage with each other a little bit more and get to know and i think that was the same thing with like that couple because of their spouses cheated on them and not only cheated on them but with each other's spouses they're like dang we have something that's close we have something that can bring us together and the last one is unrequited love i am a sucker for a love story and i want the people that i like or i'm engaging with or i'm invested in to be together and when they're not together i get sad i get sad so the fact that they were not together at the end was what made me sad. I was sad. I was just like, oh no. Like, girl, if you would have just put them slippers down and kept your booty where it needed to be, stay with that man. He loves you and you love him and stop playing. I love the directorial choice of not seeing the faces of the wife, um, Miss Chow and Mr. Chang, um, Mr. Chan. Oh my God, was I saying Chang this whole time? Mr. Chan, Chan, sorry. Um, we don't see the cheating spouses face and I like that aspect because we don't get attached. We don't get familiar with these individuals because it's not about them, right? Like things are happening to our protagonists in the story and we need to focus on them. And I like the fact that like we got swept in and got dropped into these relationships. And ironically, our protagonists are doing the same thing that their spouses are doing, right? But we have a, I mean, I'm assuming if you are similar to me, you get a different form of connection and feeling with them versus their spouses. Because their spouses, you're like, oh, they dirtbags. They horrible. Like, y'all should go to hell. Like, horrible people. But for them, you're like, oh, my God. They're in love. It's so beautiful. Just push it just just lead into that um but you don't have that same feeling for the spouses but i think that was a good choice right like and like even like i said the little things of not seeing their faces we only see their silhouettes and you might see like a, a half of a hand or something or like the back of their body we we don't get personalized with these individuals to make our connection to the protagonist stronger how we look at these at the protagonist of the film is like when they're sneaking around we feel it like we're glancing at them through like natural frames of whether it's like a doorway or like a window um and sometimes we're looking at them through a reflection not really um straight heads on so we feel the enclosure and we feel like oh my god like we are we are in this all together us as the audience and us as um the individuals playing those roles like oh my god we're doing something sneaky they're do we're doing something sneaky we're not we're not supposed to be here like this scene where it's um where um miss chang was in miss chan sorry miss chan was in the room with um mr chow and she wasn't in i think it was his apartment and she wasn't supposed to be there and like they just like kind of like were staying there so they wouldn't get caught by them nosy ass neighbors them neighbors were nosy okay nosy mind your business if i'm trying to do something with my sneaky link like 
let me be great. Um, but you felt like kind of like that intensity because you're like, oh my God, I don't want them to get caught. Like, I don't want that to happen. Their use of song was very interesting. Like they did not use that much music and there were, and the songs were, had some form of repetition, but I think that kind of set in, like there was an expectation of like feeling that you were supposed to emote when those songs were were coming on so like when one type of song was coming on I was like oh this is like the romantic sexy song the other song was like oh this is the dangerous song and they kept on like playing the same like couple of like three to four songs over and over again throughout the process um maybe it might be a monetary thing but I think how it was placed made sense and it kind of like geared you up to expect what that mood in that particular scene would be. I was invested in their love story and I just wanted them to work out. I really truly did and I was sad. I'm like, oh no, oh no babies. And, and the use of red, the use of red was really, I, I enjoyed that too because I think um, the actress, the, the woman protagonist, her um, beauty, she was really beautiful and she like looked very nice in red and like with red um, background and decorative stuff. So I thought that was cool too. Well, and the last one is that I really did feel transported. Um, I'm not gonna lie, foreign, foreign films are hard for me because it is subtitled. I feel a little bit hindrance when it comes to watching foreign films. I will say I feel like I'm a little bit more trained on it now because I put closed captions on everything. I'm trying to get hit more to watching more foreign films. Um, outside of In the Move for Love, another foreign film that I watched was Raw um, about, because <laughs> um, me and my friends do like 31 Days of Halloween. So we watched 31 um, scary thriller movies or whatever. Um, I love her. Love you, Des. Um, but one of the films that I watched during that time was Raw, and it was a French film. And it was about this girl who goes to veterinarian school and she kind of eats people. But that's all I'll say about it. Um, but it was really good, but it also was in subtitles. So I was just like, whew, this is challenging for me. But I was happy that I was able to watch the film because it was very entertaining. It was very great. And, you know, obviously a lot of us have watched like Parasite, which is another um, foreign film, right? As American film is foreign if you live in India, right? Like foreign film is a very uh, <laughs> a westernized way of looking at it, but a film that uses subtitles. Um, but so I'm trying to get more used to the repetition of watching films that have subtitles as well. Here are some fun facts about the film. Um, so fun fact, the guy who plays Mr. Shao is the daddy on um, Shang-Chi. I didn't know that. Like when I was clicking, once again, doing my quick little um, Google research, I found that out. And I thought that was a fun fact because I am a Marvel uh, MCU lover. So I'm like, oh, look at, look at him. Look at, he's, he's, he's been doing stuff for a minute, for a minute. Cause I'm not familiar with, I wasn't familiar with that actor. Um, and maybe I've seen an another film for him, from him. But before Chong-Chi, like I had never seen it. Um, and his, the actor's name is, I'm, I'm just sorry if I mispronounce it. His name is Tony Lee Young Chi Yu Wei. Wei. Sorry, we're Tony. Sorry, Tony. Um, but yeah, that's the same actor um, from Shang-Chi. Um, so the filming was supposed to be in Beijing, China, but it actually got moved to Macau because one of China's um, laws for the filmmaker, the Chinese authority said they wanted to see the script and director. So the director's name is Car Wei. He was like Carway Wong and he was just like, I don't got a script, so bye. Like apparently he doesn't like have um he doesn't he's never used scripts or um he doesn't have scripts prepared right before the filming, so they had to move it because he didn't have a script ready. So the actress, 
Um, so the actress name is Maggie Cheung. So I once again, I I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing how to say your name. It said that her hair and makeup took five hours every single day to apply, which is insane. But like not insane because her hair was definitely like 1960s style hair. So I get like how the hair might take some time. But dang, the makeup too. But I, I mean, who am I lying? I just take long to do my makeup sometimes. Honestly, like when I first started doing my YouTube videos, like I would like put on a full face, try to be like very special with it. No, you just go and get like maybe some brows, maybe a little lip gloss, some blush and then have a have a nice day I, I don't need more to the production amongst all of these other things um another fun fact is the original idea for the film came from a Japanese short story about two strangers passing each other every single day so I thought that was really interesting because like in the film you see them before they get like romantically involved kind of just like passing each other in the hallway and it's just so interesting like because we live in such like a very uh social media like uh world that when people engage and meet their like significant others in like real life they get surprised they're like what like you met your boyfriend where at the grocery store like that's crazy but it's just like yeah like People can interact with people every single day and not really talk to them, but you might like, that might be somebody you might fall in love with. That might be somebody that you have amounts of interest with, um, but you don't know and you and you won't know unless you say, hello, how you doing? Have a conversation, right? But I thought that was really interesting, especially just like how um, the director chooses the interactions with them in the beginning. It's simply like walking past each other. And the last is that um, Wong, the director, was um, influenced by Vertigo. So Al Alfred Hitchcock's movie Vertigo, um, especially with the supporting character. My final thoughts. Um... I really like this movie. I really, really, really did um, like this film. It was a romantic movie and I love romance. Um, so I was hooked. I was just like, they gotta be together. They it gotta work. I, the ending was definitely unpredictable. <sighs> I wish it, would, it was different, but it was definitely unpredictable. But just for the fact that I wish it was different, that I wish certain things had would have happened that means that I was invested in the film and like I said there were a whole lot of likes from the director Wong and like what he did um, in the film and just the choices that he made and I think that's one of the reasons why you know it's qualified as um, top 100. Now is what I say this is the best 100 movies the one of the best movies that I've ever seen I don't know if it's the best Best, but also I'm you know I like MCU movies and musicals and just very mundane uh, movies about like really simplistic things um, but I do like romance but it didn't get me in the same feels in the same vibes of like I'm trying to think of a, like a romance movie that I like really really liked of like a notebook yes I said it Nicholas Sparks I know I'm tragic but like no the notebook get me crying Titanic like I wasn't cr you know what I mean like I wasn't like dang man like it was like huh man um but I really, really did enjoy the movie. I think the movie was really, really amazing and really, really great. Um, hopefully you liked my review. Um, definitely stay tuned for the next movies that I review. Um, there'll be more coming up. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Peruse my channel. And thank you for stopping by.